Let's talk about setup. What tools you're going to need, what chromatic tuner. I have three tuning tools. This one's one of my favorite. It's a battery operated rotary tuner with a diamond carbide tip. It works very well, very fast. Requires a little practice because it works too good. But if you're in a hurry, there's nothing better than a rotary tool. This one, which I pulled out of my Honer toolkit, is a file, but it's a jeweler's file, very pointy, that allow me to reach in there quite easily. Okay, so for those of you who are used to using files, go ahead, pull it out. This is all about you being comfortable on the bench. And finally, it's one that I did not demonstrate earlier, but it is a ceramic file. It is probably the least invasive on the reed material. Remember, it is spring metal. And if you are looking for precision, I highly recommend, and in fact, it is Dick Schober's favorite tool to use when he's, when he's on the bench. So going backwards, this will take you the longest to tune. Next in line will be your file. And then the rotary tool will be the fastest. The other tools I'll be using, and this you've seen me use, is a brass feeler gauge that I had machined and sanded to a knife edge that I'll be using as my reed lifting tool and my reed supporting tool. This very small, it's, it's a jeweler's screwdriver I'll be using only to set the pressure on the pins. I'll show you how to do that. This one is made by Weha number 260. The chromatic tuner that I'll be using is one that you saw in a prior Harp Tech study. is a chromatic tuner by ClearTune. And I loaded this one, it's an, actually an app, a very inexpensive app, that I put on my iPad. It is bloody accurate and super size, so everybody on the screen will be able to see what I'm seeing. Now that I have shown you the tuning tools that we will be using, next I want to demonstrate how to set up, how to adjust the pressure on the pins, and how to actually load up and install the reed plate.